Hi there. Hi there, everyone. Um, let's, uh, let's begin. So, uh, a quick question just to warm up a bit. Um, what country are you from? I'm really curious to see the people that are here. I see 150 in gathering. Germany, hi there. Hmm, let's see, what, what countries are you from? Today we'll have fun, so I need to know a bit of things about you. Romania, okay, Romania. Spain, <laughs> how cool is that? <laughs> Paris, Hamburg, hello Romania, India, Cyprus, <laughs> Hungary, <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, Greece, France, just unique countries, Turkey, <laughs> excellent. Now, um, what, what isolation makes of people, huh? Okay, so refactoring to object oriented in Java, part two. I have a bit of lag between, uh, between us, so I see your message after a couple of seconds. Just don't hesitate to write me anything you want, anything, any comment you have, any, any idea you have, okay? Refactoring to object-oriented code in Java. Now, let's see. First of all, very briefly about me. What's up with me and why am I talking about uh, refactoring? My name is Victor Renta. I am one of the two Java champions in Romania. I have 14 years, 14 years of Java and other languages. I'm also a big fan of Scala, for example. From April, I'm fully independent, doing trainings and consultancy for companies for a living. This is what I do uh, all of my time. Um, I gave a lot of talks at various conferences. You can find even a playlist on my website. The point is that I have a website. Uh, I'm, also, I'm also the founder of Bucharest Software Craftsmanship Community, one of the biggest communities in Romania. Software Craftsmanship, it's actually all about simple design, refactoring, and unit testing. This is what um, this community is focused on. And uh, I run regular free webinars for this community. This actually is one of the events run for this community. I initially gave them in Romanian, but then uh, due to the multiple requests, I switched to English and I'm now publishing it live for everyone. So what I'm doing for a living today? Training. Uh, more than 40 companies, a lot of days, almost 3,000 developers, more, mostly in the Java world, okay? So Spring, Hibernate, Functional Programming with Java 8. Design patterns, domain-driven design, uh, clean code and refactoring, and this is where I will get the ideas for today from, okay? okay. Unit testing and test-driven development, these are full days of training uh, that you, I, I can give to companies or individuals if you like. The point is, um, I am also posting on the social media there. Um, hi there, Fabricio. And in case you want something for your company, don't hesitate to, com to contact me. In case you want something for yourself, you should know that I'm currently uh, gathering up stuff on Teachable. The next live webinar is tomorrow um, about creational design patterns. Super cool topic. Um, all the ways you can create instances. Okay, that was the one minute about me. Now let's make best use of your time and let's jump right into the code. As, as you know, this is the second, um, the second episode of this refactoring. Uh, I would like to do a very brief recap of what happened in the first episode, just to get in the right mood. We started with some code which had a lot of, so basically the summary of the refactorings we did in the previous episode, which by the way is already on YouTube um, from previous time. We extracted a lot of methods, we inlined methods and variables, we renamed a lot of stuff to make code more readable and uh, more suggestive. We took care to not break the compilation as we refactored. So very important aspect of refactoring is not to break stuff, not bugs, but neither compilation. You should, you should, uh, uh, camera on, what do you mean camera on? It's not on, what do you mean? Uh, okay, on the right, good, thank you, <laughs> good suggestion. Um, so don't uh, break compilation, it means that uh, you, as the, the moment you break the compilation, your uh, IDE, your IntelliJ, for example, will not be able to refactor correctly anymore. So this is super important to um, not break compilation. Then we moved methods, that's what, you will see this again today, we moved methods to a class to fixed feature envy code smell, which is actually a behavior which relies on state of a single object should, should be placed in that object usually, okay? This is, this is what led us to the move method in the player. This is just a quick recap. If you want to see the whole stuff, the recording is in, on YouTube. This move method in the player actually changes and uh, takes care of the state of the player. Okay, encapsulates invariant and basically the place of a player can't can't get past 12. So if you if you run past 12, um, then 
what what will happen is that you will get back to zero basically this is what this is what the, this guard is here and i'm encapsulating this invariant in a method in the object okay um this is normally a legacy code kata yes you are right i've started with the ugly uh, uh, code or the original code i've made a copy of this and i've created a test which ap applying the gold master technique compares the outputs of the of the um where are you where are you of the original game with the copied code so this what allowed me to um, uh, basically this is called the characterization test actually, and it allows me to uh, to take the output of the original game and compare it to what I am refactoring in order not to make sure I don't break stuff. Right. Um, what's your take on people who compile own version of Java? <laughs> not not now, please. <laughs> No, um, sticking. But in case you have other other questions that I I miss, just ask me on email. Please do. I'm eager to to talk with you. So then we moved methods, of course. Then we and we saw switch expressions, right? Switch expressions, not statements as you were used to. And it's actually in code here. Return switch. This is kind of like mind blowing for Java developers. This is like uh, switch now returns a value for you. Uh, this allowed us to shorten a bit the stuff. You note know that you don't need to return explicitly anymore. You just arrow. It's a, a slightly different syntax, but it, this is just newer Java starting from 13, if I'm not mistaken. Good. And then Alt J, uh, which means you take a token, you Alt J everywhere, and you write in multiple places at once. This is one of my favorite my favorite features of IntelliJ. Good. And then we also touched a bit on, on records. Watch the previous record, uh, recording if you want. Uh, good. And another point for us is any field you create in a class, let it be private final at the start. No getters and setters at the beginning. If you have to, create them. But create them individually. And I showed you last time how to create one. And I will do it again today. So let's move on. We have the player class that we extracted from the state of the class uh, uh, of the game class. Now, we uh, the last thing we did in the previous episode, we were moving stuff from the game class into the player class because we said that if we have an array of uh, purses and an array of in penalty boxes, then each item in this array could correspond to the state of a player. So what we did, we moved fields from here into the player class and I will continue doing this slowly explaining what I'm do what I'm doing so basically when you add a player right now you are setting to zero the um, purses of how many players this how many players is actually the size of the players and given that you added a new player it means that you are setting a value to a to zero of for the index of the player that was added this is a sign that basically whenever you are adding, uh, a, whenever you are setting a purse f after you add a player, you are actually want, what, what you really want to do is to, uh, is to have a purse dedicated to a, cer to a certain player. That's why I will go to my player and I will add a private, and uh, as I promised, private final at the beginning, int purse. The purse is like a wallet, like the stash of coins, let's say, that a player has, uh, points, if you, if you want. As I said, there will be no getters and setters, but still it needs to have a value. And looking at what happens down below here, where we added the player, we see that it's assigned to zero. So let's make it zero, although it's default zero, but let's leave it like that for now. Then, person, I would like to see wherever, if there are, if there is, if there are other places in which person is used. So I will search for occurrences for the places array. What I, what, what, what I will do is let's see first of all this is my occurrence the next one is purses plus plus now purses plus plus means to add one more point or what what whatever was that gold coin there you go and this is the plus plus and this is the purses of a current player nice so what what does, does it mean really it means that in this position exactly in this place i will need to get the current player current player dot what does it mean, plus plus? Well, increment, maybe add coin. Why not? Make some method which is very suggestive. Okay, D don't just get and set. I know that you, m some of you are tempted to do set uh, coins uh, of get coins, 
plus one. But that's not the point. The point is to make expressive ob methods in the objects that you create. So add coin is a better alternative. Now, add coin doesn't yet exist, right? So let's go to that line first. Note, however, that I can change code directly in the search screen. Add coin will need to, will need to be implemented like purse plus plus. Okay, adding one more, which means that the purse cannot be final. And this is a case in which I can't make it, I can't leave it final no matter how I want because the application requires me to change the coins. It's actually obvious, right? You are gathering. Another question is why is it purse? Hmm, is it, could, it be, be, could it be, be, be coins perhaps? Let's see. Now, this add coin, uh, whenever I added uh, um, uh, one to the purses of this player, I am adding a coin to the current player. Nice. Uh, now, look what I will do. I will not change the place where I will read the field, but I will only first change the places where I will update, where I'm updating the field. So, I will hunt down, hunt down other places in which I am changing the array. Coming back and see from for here. We have purses of current player plus plus. So I'm changing the uh, I'm 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 um, I'm changing my variant of data wherever the old variant of data is changed. The tests are written in advance because this is the kind of uh, the kind of exercise that I'm working on. So I we can trust the tests that the test will ensure that we didn't break anything. How did I manage to write such tests? I, it's topic of, of another episode. But for now, just look here, here. So we've added a coin whenever we did plus plus, okay? And then this, uh, if you run the tests now, nothing should break because we did not read from the coins any uh, at all. If you, if you look closer here, the coins are just updated, are never get. So here comes the next part. The test is, gr is green, it, 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 it's okay, but then, by the way, don't be tricked that it's a single test. No, it's actually 10,000 tests randomly distributed, but that's another story. Coming back here, the thing that I want to um, do next is to get the coins out of this uh, object. How do I do that? Of course, with a get coin, right? It's e easy to do this, but note, uh, however, that I'm not using alt insert to generate all the getters and setters that I can. No, I will just add get coins. That's it. I'll just type the name of the getter and the getter gets automatically generated. And I need this. Why do I need this? Because the purses, wherever, so I've changed the places in which they are updated. I've added the coin also to my version of the data. Now I need to take care of the places where the data is being read. For example, here, this is a risky change. So current player dot uh get coins and by the way look at another name convention interesting this could be directly coins this is somewhat uh in the same spirit of the, how records will look in java 15 java 14 okay coins there you go and run again i'm deliberately breaking the convention of getters and setters because this led to a lot of shitty code to be honest so there you go coins and the test is green this is a great this is something because let me just search for what I changed the code. Purse, uh, not purse, coins, it was named. There we go. This is actually where uh, a place in which if I broke something, the test will, will, will break. Here, I also need to replace. And now let's look again at where the purses are still being used. The purses are set to zero at the beginning. Then the purses are incremented. And then here, ah, this is another story. I need to do this also. So this is like uh, current player dot coins there you go uh, we did extract uh we did extract uh we did extract um some class here it was the player class right no good uh yes russian accent no romanian accent yes we were under russian but at some point so the tests are still green interesting now in this moment the Purses are only updated, are never read anymore. Look, equals to zero, plus, 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 plus. Uh, it means that I'm just changing stuff that I don't actually read at all. So what I, what I will do, I will just delete this line, delete this line, and then run the tests again very slowly to make sure I don't break anything. So three lines changed, tests again. Progressive change, this is like good refactoring. This is how you should be doing, not breaking compilation and do going Tarzan style, no. 
take baby steps in refactoring, always. In this moment, process became, becomes grayed out in IntelliJ, which means that it's not used anymore. So there you go, delete the array. The same will happen for in, in penalty box. Let's see where this is being used. Well, it's assigned to false at the beginning, very good. So this tells me that here, if I make the private final in penalty box boolean, in the penalty box, in penalty box, okay, then it should be false. Okay, of course it's false by default anyway, but then roll, let's see what happens here. If in penalty box, okay, good. This is a read, I'm not focused on reading yet, I'm focused on uh, updating the places where it's changed. There you go. In penalty box equals true. Now, how will I, how will I do this? Let's go for current player and say the current player, hmm, move to penalty box. If you've ever played Monopolis, then this might sound familiar. Move to penalty box. Move to penalty box is like jail, right? Move to penalty box, it means that does in penalty box equals to true, right? Which means that the field cannot be final anymore. That's good. But tell me, if you put a, ver a boolean to true, wouldn't you expect to put it to false also? Wait a second. Wait a second. We've put it to false only at the beginning, right? Uh, yeah, maybe a decider could be interesting to, to introduce, but not in, this, not, not in this second, right? Just keep things simple for now. First, I want to understand the code. As, as we refactor the code, we will get better understanding. What I'm currently puzzled about is that uh, we, only we only set it to false when we add a player, but we set it to true when we get a wrong answer. Now, folks, to be honest, once you enter the penalty box, you should also be able to exit the penalty box somehow, right? I mean, what the heck? Something is, something is strange. Something is missing. So uh, we have a problem, to be honest. Something appears to be fishy, to be... It, there might be a bug around here because the player never exits a penalty box. I'm not entirely sure what should be the, cor the correct behavior because I don't have any specification as usual. So, uh, but thinking a bit, if you gave a wrong answer, you move to penalty box. I, can, I could understand that. But if you, if you do a correct answer, shouldn't you somehow exit the penalty box? So I'll put a to do here possible bug uh, shouldn't you exit the penalty box here somewhere I don't know where yet okay but um, strictly speaking we've managed to um, to replace the writing I mean to to uh, add uh, to, to, to have the writing happening in both. Uh, both in the bool and both in the array. In which case, I could move on and say I want to replace the reads. So wherever I'm reading from penalty box of current player, I can just access the bool and from the player. So current player, good, dot. Now comes the fun part. I don't have a getter, but it's very easy to, to create it. Is in penalty box. There you go. Notice how the, gen the getter are generated automatically. Is in penalty box. Good. Next one, here, this is current player dot is in penalty box. Uh, expansion over dot, very cool feature of IntelliJ. And wrong answer, this is where we already added this. So basically we replaced all the reads so we can delete the writes now. The tests, let's see what happens. The tests, ah, it should be green, come on, be green. Green, excellent, green. Now this allows me to remove this field and we've kind of um, put all the information necessary inside the player how does the player look like well um, player has a name which is final very good has a place which is zero by the, uh, initially of course then the coins zero and then of course this should be public player good anyway and since the class kind of appears to be done kind of appears to be done, I could move it to a separate file, of course. Public class, alt enter, move to separate Java file. There you go, out. Good. So we have name, we have place, we have move, add coin, then how many coins I have, move to penalty box and is in penalty box. And with the question mark, how does it ever get out of the penalty box? Good. 
now coming back here uh, any variables you so uh, i will leave a bit um i will leave a bit um the discussion about the uh, player class and uh, focus on cleaning this remaining code first of all any kind of variable you have of course private the question is could it be final why not you don't you don't assign it anywhere so this is what IntelliJ will tell me this can be final because you'd never set it again interesting note however that even if the uh, list reference is final you can still add stuff to that uh, collection of course here nice now let's see for int i equals now i need to explain a bit why did we make it final can we change the theme to dark mode? No, I'm a, I'm a, a, um, I'm on the bright side of the, of the force. Well, I'm I'm old enough to come from Eclipse, and in Eclipse it's all white. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so um, list and private final. Pri um, why would I make it final? Uh, because it's just a marker for the for the future developer who will maintain the code to leave the variable, not to reassign the variable right okay good now uh this is private int current player of course this is what what's what's this in is getting out of penalty box now i'm curious what would that be but let's let's leave it for 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 next for for, for the future this is an extra parenthesis remove unnecessary parenthesis excellent very useful in case you have boolean conditions in which you aren't entirely sure every time pop question plus i science question plus i sports question plus i and then what the heck why is it different oh really now and it's public why the heck is it public right uh so i will try to inline this first look at where it's being used it's only used here very good inline the method for for symmetry of course then add that's good that's good A return true <laughs> what the heck anyway return true why not Still, why are you returning? To who are you returning? Do you ever return false? No. Then what the heck is that? Void. That's that's nonsense, right? However, I'm now stepping on on dangerous parts here. Let me check a bit the comments. Um, uh, how do you make a player move? I can't figure it out. Well, there is a method in the player which uh, moves it, moves it here by give by the number of uh, by the value of the dice that you threw the roll it moves it advances the player with a certain amount of of positions let's say okay that's in the first episode now let's let's see here we have this going on this is strange so we have 50 questions of each type okay uh, what i'm currently uh, interested in is taking this out of this class these four uh, fields why because i don't like my classes having so much so many fields it's not I don't like it. Plus, they are somewhat related, you see? Pop questions, science questions, sports questions, rocks questions. What the heck, right? Yes, make the euro right. I will break the eye game contract to change when changing to void. That's what stopped him. But since you saw it, I will change it now. I will make it to return void. And alt enter, I will say, let's see if I can, yeah, make eye game dot add return void. This is the interface of the um, that I extracted in the previous episode be in front of my game in order to be able to uh, have this both versions of the game running, the old original one, the ugly one, and the refactored one. You are right. So since you noticed it, then yes, I changed it, and there you go. Cool. What's next? Let's see. How many players is not used? You don't think. You know my poetry, right? People, when they got old, they get weird questions. I'm, I started writing poetry, and this is my poem. When it's red, yellow, blue, uh, or gray, Altenter will save your day. This is like, right? When you see something colorful in your, in your in IntelliJ, you don't think first. You first plus Altenter, and then you think. So in my case, I'm on gray. There you go. It's grayed out. Delete. Bye bye. Roll. Let's read. So this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Roll. Okay. Okay. Current player is in penalty box. So if current player is in penalty box, if it rolls something divisible by two, oh, okay. Odd or odd or even, right? Yeah. Odd or even. Okay. Then uh, is getting out of is getting out of penalty box equals true. Okay. This relates to the problem we identified. Where where are those? Uh, where do you exit the penalty box? Um, 
let's make international and extract those strings in separate final strings. No, I won't, I won't go international yet. I would, I would like to clean the shit, uh, the code first. Uh, uh, yes, the I is not a very good name. It's just temporary there. Of course, just temporary because I'm dealing with legacy code. Anywhere you are in legacy code, you are allowed to use anything. Okay, good. Then, uh, um, over dot. No, it's not a plugin. It's the default behavior for over dot. So current player dot coins. Right? You just auto complete. No, nothing fancy. Okay. Good. Flexible. <laughs> I'm not a flexible guy. I'm a simple guy. So move uh, player overall. Current player names new location. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's interesting. Yes. Okay. Good. Maybe some of you are big fans of string format. Maybe if you are a fan of that, you can let me format it. Yeah, because I'm on a newer version of Java, I can do print full and there we go. Ah, this works in the older versions anyway. Good. So the category is current category. Ask a question. That's fair enough. Then is not getting out of penalty box. Okay, equals to false. Good. And then something new. I will compact a bit the code to get better vision of the code first. Good. The category is current category. Now what's this function all about? Oh my God. What is this? Oh my God! What is this? What is this? Ooh. Move the questions list into a list of questions. Yeah, interesting idea. Uh, you know, it's, uh, move the questions list into a list of questions. Interesting. All of these four, but not just a l plain list, right? I mean, let's see first. Let's see what where we get what we got here. We got in this uh, part in which. Depending on the place in which the current player is located, it will be, it will uh, get a different category. Zero, four, and eight get pop. One, five, nine get science. Two, six, this is like a riddle. What the heck is this? Two, six, ten. Do you? Do, can any of you see the the relation between these values? Why are uh, what's common in them? Can can can, can you see this? Yeah, category should be an enum. That's a good one. And now I, I like that. I will even create it right now. Enum. And I will say question category. Question category. Why not? And make it pop. Make it science. Make it sports. And aha, plus four. Modulo four. Thank you. You all figured out. Very good. So, and the last one is rock, let's say. Now, these are modulo four. I mean, something like, something like this, I think. Right, but I'm really curious. <laughs> Something is fishy. Uh, this, uh, I mean, okay, zero is true, four is true, eight is true. But what about twelve? Uh, this is a trick here. You need to figure out something. You need to figure out something. Um, twelve. Can there be? Uh, can the player go to the twelfth position? Let's check. Place. How do you advance place by move? Well. The move, if you get over 12, will... You know that game in which you have this and you move from here to here to here to here to here and then you come back and go again on the same board, right? It's like going back on position zero if you get past 12. So this is basically an invariant that you have to take into account in this case because you can't ever have 12. So these are all the possible values divisible by 4. And now, this is all the possible values divisible by four, which have one as a modulo, basically. This is <laughs> all places divisible by, okay? And for the rest one is this. Now, we can, we can, yeah, yeah, we, uh, the formulas are pouring in the chat. Very good, very good. Um, invariant should be a constraint. You mean you, I could, I should, do what? I should assert something, perhaps? Nah, since I'm working with a model which enforces this invariant, I don't need to worry much about that. Modulo 4, thank you. And now, uh, we can rewrite this a bit, right? We can extract the common part in a, in a variable. Let's make it uh, modulo. No, it's a silly name, but why not? But can't I extract just the modulo, please? Variable. Okay, everywhere. Modulo. Good. Now, this modulo stuff, I can uh, do if equals zero, then return. If equals one, then return. Else, return. Now, if this happens, uh, uh, you need just to put some more else's in between. Look very careful. This doesn't break anything. Why? Because you've already returned. 
If you put an else afterwards, it's, it's for nothing. So you will ask me, why are you doing this? Because I want to go more with Alt Enter. By doing little, little changes, I ended up with a bit of code which IntelliJ knows how to refactor to a switch. Very good. It's actually a switch expression. Nice. Modulo equals, and then I can even inline this back. Right. So, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, cause, no, 12 should be a constant, you say. If the 12, if 12 becomes another value like 13 or 14, this entire algorithm here kind of breaks. So this 12 is very hard to change without breaking other parts of the code. Uh, well, yes, it is. It can be two. Uh, uh, the trick group. L let, let's check. So zero, one. Let's run the test. Zero, one, two. This will be the... F yeah, the tests are green. So it didn't break anything. Now, you say probably that case three should be here. But if that's the case, then uh, IntelliJ, w I mean, Java, will not figure out that these are the only possible three values for this modulo operation. So you need to throw an exception here. That's not is necessarily bad, to be honest. Right. Because it's it's impossible math, right? I mean, you can't possibly get this. But mm, 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 mm. okay, let's see. Let's see. What can we do more? First of all, this modulo stuff. It's complexity which has nothing to do with the with the act of running the game, really. I mean, this kind of logic is complex enough for this class to take care of uh, of figuring out what what uh, what uh, question should be asked is something. Yeah, ugly. So maybe I could take take this out of here at some point. But first of all, let's put this enum into 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 functioning because look what happens here. Here I did a switch of the current category. So I'm calling this method. I'm getting back a string and I'm switching over the string. And I'm like, what the heck? Really? This uh, once you are switching on something which is a finite set, then it's better to return the enums back. So I will change this to return a question category. Uh, we all know this, right? Typing the, the uppercase letters of the words will get you uh, faster to where you want to get. And this is science. Thank you. And this is sports. Thank you. And this is rock. Now, we're fine on here, but what happens next? Let's see. First, I need to check to, to correct this one. This is pop. This is science. This is sports. And this is rock. Oh, come on. And there we go, rock. But now comes something interesting. Why is it yellow? IntelliJ complains it is useless. What? What do you mean useless? It's there because who knows what, what happens? Who knows what? But IntelliJ, but not IntelliJ, Java. <laughs> Java tells you, my friend, you are using switch expressions today. So in case any other value appears here, question about isolation. Right? Any kind of other question appears here, this will crash the compilation. Very interesting. So this will actually mean that you can't forget to add to cover all the places. If you think of it a bit, it's quite obvious, right? Because the switch now has to return something. So if you want to return something, what would you return in case isolation is a value? So very interesting. Very interesting idea here that with the switch, Expression that returns stuff. If you switch on an enum, IntelliJ, not IntelliJ, Java compiler will make sure you don't forget to add all the cases. So there you go. Create missing switch branch, right? You can't possibly forget it. One will, will not compile. Good. Whew, there you go. So this is a good a gain that we had because we don't need this default anymore. Phew. But I see the compilation is successful. Does it co does it work? Does it uh, pass the tests? Let's see. Oh sh! <clears throat> Ouch! Ouch! Comparison failure. Ouch! Let's see the differences. The category is science. What? I broke the code. Why did I do? What did I do? Let's see first of all. Where does this category is? I need to go in to, to search in the game, in my new game, right? And I can see here already that I'm concatenating the enum. Uh, yeah, we don't need the break uh, statement of which switch expressions. You don't need the break statement. It's, it's useless. It's not possible, actually, to put it, put it here. 
right? Because it automatically breaks after the expression. And in case you want to have multi more code than this, you will just open this. Yeah, not the yield. No. How do you do this? Yield, I think it's what? Yield. Let's change it to yield. Yeah. And more stuff. But first, uh, this is Java, the newer version of Java that none of you are using yet, probably. So let's keep things simple for now. The problem that I, I, I found just now is that I'm concatenating the return value of the current category directly to a string. I, I ended up in the old game. Directly to a string. And this led to, li to big problems. So there you go. Yeah, here. What I need to do is to uh, remember the original names. It appears that this matters. Pop, science, sports, because in, I need to print this out on sports and rock. Good. Now, next, I need to a constructor for this purpose. Alt enter, create constructor, of course. And this is like a label. Let's make it a label. And uh, alt enter on the parameter of any constructor with, will allow you to create a field for this which I can make final, of course, and maybe get label. There I go. Other ideas here, to string in the enum. No, I don't use to string for, no, don't use to string uh, except for debugging purposes. I, I don't like, no, name chart dot plus name to lowercase sub string. No, 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 that's a hack, my friend. That's a hack. And then come uh, coming, coming back where was the crash where was the problem i was concatenating where I, where were I, where was i concatenating here dot get i love the possibility of changing the code here it's just <laughs> so so dirty you know? <laughs> excellent and now run it keeps you focused i really like that uh, it keeps you focused on doing your job i mean switching to many views it's Whew, there you go that was close. Now, this question category, hmm, hmm, yeah, maybe, okay. Current category, yes, okay, but to be honest, there is a little trick here. There is a little trick here. I am deciding what category to, to return based on the place of the current player. It's not bad, but look, this one, this one, this one, all have to do with questions, right? And also this part, they all have to do with questions. So what I want to do next, it will, will be a bit strange, but I want to take all of this stuff out of this class. All of this, I will not move them to other classes yet. I will just uh, localize them in the same place of my class. There you go. And now look again at them. What, what happens here? I have four fields, adding 50 questions in each list, extract next question, this label, ca this category that you suggested, very good. Um, question category of modulo get label. Interesting. I yes, you saw something interesting. Yes, yes, you're right, Alan. Uh, look what we can do here, actually. But it's a bit hacky, if I if I may. Question category. Uh, you know that it has a values array. And in case you put them in the correct order, and that's the weakness of this, of this solution, I can directly index in this array by this uh, modulo. And I think that's kind of it. Yeah. This will, let me prove it. Uh, it, will, it will work, but it's a bit hacky. It's a bit, it's not bad. I kind of like it, to be honest, because, you know, if in case you add one more value to this, uh, then um, it will automatically, almost automatically, you know how this will be fixed completely to be elegant, elegant, elegant size or length. There you go. You know, like this, in case you add one more category here, automatically you will get the, but, yeah, quite creepy indeed. And, and vulnerable to what kind of problems? Look what I'm doing. I'm, I'm swapping the order and this is, this is, yeah, this is over clever. That's a good, that's a good, uh, but you, this is the purpose of this, uh, of ca this kind of exercises to play with stuff, to try out stuff. This is exactly the purpose. This is the place where you should put the, your best ideas, your most creepy, weird ideas into practice, not in production code, but here. Okay, good. Try them out here first. Maybe ask a colleague or two and then decide. Now, all of this stuff needs to move out of this class. And I will write to, I would like to use with you a technique that I use in the most horrible legacy code or old code that I ever worked with uh, to extract a class from another class by 
spawning it from inside. I will first de define a class here, like questions or questions repository. We will tweak the name afterwards. I will embed the things that I want to go in that class in a, in inside it like this. So why am I doing this? Why am I, am I, why don't I create another file like we all do? Why am I taking this path? Because I want to keep focused on doing the least amount of changes at, uh, at each time. So right now I want to fix the compilation. What will happen? Well, first of all, uh, what, where does it break? Current category, did I move the current category too? Current category, yes. The current category should come from this class. So it means that I need an instance of the questions inside my game. Of course I need it. Okay. So right now I will create it. Private final questions, questions, equal, uh, questions equals new questions. So the purpose of this technique is to, uh, lim to minimize the time in which your code doesn't compile. Questions dot current category and afterwards you can actually use the alt j if you want but for now let's move it just, just the three places now the code compiles no? if you run it it's a, i think it actually works but it, it's of course outrageous what happens here it's an inner class not even a nested one it's like what the heck right yes the inam will get extracted of course yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> we usually do that in production code, not to break our fun project. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> so, uh, question category. Um, these questions here, then uh, these fields should come inside, but the code compiles now and the tests run. The next step will be to make the class static. Whoa, now that's a game changer because you can't access, you can't access the fields of the class that, we, that hosts you anymore. This will force you to move these inside the questions and this will actually force you to move this inside the questions also in a constructor that you really have to create constructor there you go and paste here good and i think i have several more yeah current player is like uh, wait 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 current play yes of course i can't access the current player from the outside class so i will need to take this as a parameter right take this as a parameter now let's make it uh yeah why not current what's that it was the place or the 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 index i don't know index i don't care necessarily what it is right index and then this index will come as a parameter there you go and i'm, I'm curious if i put here the value like this what will happen no it didn't work extract next question still needs the index the index needs to come as a parameter to this question from outside object really what's wrong with you int please object couldn't oh whoa 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 oh whoa, whoa 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 this is again the same problem this is the index that i'm trying to not that i'm i'm abstracting away i don't care if it's the place of the player it's just an index for me right so i'm thinking this problem in isolation that's one of the key advantages of object orientation you can decompose the problems into sub problems now to to call these methods i need to pass current player place everywhere where i need these methods there you go let's see if i broke anything so i know it's a bit if it's first it's, if, it's, if it's the first time you see this it's a bit mind-blowing so in my first class i created a, another class inside it was first a normal class like an inner class then i make it a static which is called a nested class in java uh, why did they, did they took this path because this uh, 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 makes me uh, take the least amount of time without uh, compiling code class and uh, not class public static and this and the, uh, in this in this moment i can take this out and move it to another file with move f6 no first i need to make some stuff public because these will need to be called from outside okay let's make it f6 move out out and it's a separate class knowing that you can uh, move it to a separate class in a matter of seconds allows me to take this path really what am I left with in the game? I have the list of players. Good. I have the question, which is final, comes here. I have the. It's a good practice to put the final field at the beginning, right? Not using plurals makes you add list set uh, to everything. Yes, I don't like uh, the list. Um, 
interesting, interesting discussion here. Class names should not be plural. Well, it's actually questions, many questions, right? It's not a question, it's a question. Or maybe you, can, you, can, you would name it question repository. That's also interesting. Um, Kata book, yes, I will recommend, I will always recommending this book. It's a very good book. Uh, Coding Dojo Handbook, Coding, Coding Dojo Handbook by Emily Becker. It, it, this and many other things that I'm doing are taking from, are taken from this book and I'm pasting the link to this book in the chat right now. This is the book for uh, exercises like this and many other kinds of. Good. Question category. This is no place for this uh, to be here, so move it out. Good. Make it public also. Good. Now, let's see what we're left with. Final fields at the beginning. Let me check the comments again. Okay, bread and butter. <laughs> Did you want to leave the question category? No, I did not. I moved it. We are using four lists of string and not interesting. Interesting uh, idea now you gave me. Um, uh, Jug New Wallace. <laughs> the interesting idea that why are we using four lists since we have a restricted uh, set of questions, really? Well, yeah, this could be replaced by. And let's try this. Why not? First, to check, to check if the tests are working. A map, yeah, that's what she's suggesting. You will see in the second. A map of. So what you were suggesting is actually is to index somehow the questions by their type. So uh, why not a map between a question category and the list of string? That's what you're suggesting, really. Questions, all the questions. This which is suggesting me to directly type, uh, it's called Codota. It's a plugin, artificial intelligence code completion. <laughs> Cool feature to have. Qu question, now, what would you do here, actually? Well, instead of adding to all the individual lists, and I will use the same technique, I will add a question to each category. So pop. Uh, but I know one problem here is that I need to initialize the lists first. Yuck. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Mm. Mm. OK. Mm. I don't like that. Put pop. But let's let's be dumb for a second, okay? Let's be dumb for a second. What do you uh, something in that? Yes, static inner class means it doesn't have an instance of a big class. Yes, yes, yes. I'm moving fast, my friends. This is how it's supposed to be. In case there are missing pieces, ask me afterwards. I'm really eager to answer you if you want to ask me. Um, sports, and I will follow the questions in, uh, that you've asked afterwards. Uh, read them again. Pop science sports rock. Good. But you know these are all the values in the in the in the inner, right? So why not <laughs> why not being a bit smart here? Values um, array of uh, stream stream of stream of right of this array basically alt enter thank you and then for each add uh, I mean put right in the questions okay questions it's a some people will like that, others will not. I don't argue if it's a good technique necessarily or, or bad. It's a bit smarter, but maybe not, not with the for each, right? Maybe just with the loop, plain loop. It works just fine, okay? And the same loop will kind of have to repeat here, but the problem is you're putting different values each time. It is pop questions, size questions, and so on. So basically, this is like this. You can't automate this that much. You, you could, if you think of it, just using the label. But let's not just go there, because we are actually faking here. You, fig you, you notice, right? Uh, we, there will be normal questions here. Science, science. <laughs> and this is the sports question, and this is the rock question. I would like to answer some rock question, to be honest. And then a rock question, rock, and then sports. Good. Now, I didn't yet, oops, not yet. I don't have to put right. I don't have to put. I did it wrong. I need to get the list multicursor. Yeah. Dot add. Yeah, baby. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> then, then extract the questions. Okay, good. And then what do I do here, actually? Uh, here is interesting. Given the category, I can be smart here. So, create a category is the category, and then I can remove 
from the map that I identify. So quest questions dot get of the question category dot remove of zero, remove zero. And this is what I need to return. Good. Test. It's a bit smarter, but let me see. Let me see what you wrote here. Uh, stream range. Mm. Competitive absent. Competitive absent. Yeah. You got me on that. I didn't thought that. You're right. Competitive absent. Uh, yeah, competitive absent here instead of, 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 of getting. You're right. Maybe you're right. Init method putting in the thing in the constructor, but we are in the constructor. Ah, you don't like that much things put in the constructor. I give you that. Yes, I don't like it either. Uh, create a builder. Mm, too much. Yes, you need with dummy values. Should be logical. Yes, indeed. For th this is a dummy. This is a dummy set of questions, of course. Now, oops. The tests are still working. The code is shorter. It's interesting. I wouldn't switch to indexes just now for this case, but maybe in the future. Good. Game. He's getting out of penalty box. <laughs> Not again. But move player. Oh, wait a second. Move player does current player that move. Nah, really? Duh. So I will inline the method. Inlining the method means to put the expression inside the method everywhere where the method is being called. Into those two places. Refactor. Good. Ask question. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Ask question. Okay. It's dubious if you really. It's, it's more code than, than previously. The previous method was just plain obvious. But this one, it's a bit more complex. So that I, would I will not inline it in both places. Current player, however, no, this, if I will inline it everywhere, the code will grow too much. So no, I'll leave it like that. Was correctly answered. Current player is in penalty box. If he's getting out of penalty box and correctly answered the question, if he, if it, if he should be getting out of penalty box and answered correctly the question, shouldn't he actually get out of the pe penalty box? Here. This is where I should ask the business. Email the business. In case he's about to exit from penalty box and correctly answers, Will should it he actually get out of penalty box? But the question is, where, when uh, does he ever get out of penalty box? Well, it appears that in case it rolls an um, an e an odd number, right? An odd number, like one, three, five. In case it uh, it rolls such an odd number, that he then he has the uh, opportunity to get out of penalty box. You see. So this is kind of obvious that you need something here, but of course you can't put it there. It's tricky. It, you, it, will, it will differ from what runs in production code. So we leave it like that, but ask a very pertinent, a very clear question to the business at this moment. Now, what's left? Current player dot add coin. Good, 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 good. Return winner. Hmm, winner. What's with the winner stuff? If current player equals player's size, wait, wait a second. Mm, this is duplicated code. Nah, that's a problem. Duplicated code. I think, I hope it's only there. Yes. Oh no, third one. Okay, so this is like a reflex. So when you see duplicated code, you don't normally think much, right? <laughs> Three branching statements. Yes, yes, yes. Very, 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 very bad. And probably this will take another episode to finish this exercise, but let's uh, focus and draw, draw the conclusions after we finish this. Three duplicated code fragments can be replaced with the extracted method code. How would you name it something which does plus plus and in case you get past the last one comes back to the first one. This is like advanced player. Right, so move to next player. Move to next player. And replace everywhere. Alexander, extract the for loop to separate method. The for loop. What for loop? I don't have a for loop. For. Hmm. Um, at the top of the method. I kind of lost track of your suggestions, sorry. Uh, move to next player is here. And first of all, you need to notice something. You move to next player, everything you do, everything you do, I mean, anyhow you return, 
after returning the uh, from this method, you will always move to next player, which kind of makes sense, right? So what would you do? Well, uh, in this case, there is there are many there are several options. One of the options. Let me just uh, collapse this a bit to, for better view. One of the options is to make a variable, assign the variable, and then return so return result. And instead of returning directly here, making the result equal. But I don't like that. Instead of doing this, I will wrap the method call. Wrap the method call. What does it mean? Well, create another method with pretty much the same uh, content. I mean, move this to a separate method. I don't know how to name it yet. But then I know that every time I finish AAA, okay, no matter how it finishes, before returning, you know, you notice what, what I'm doing. I will, I will put. But first of all, I need to make very um, uh, to pay much attention to see that every time, uh, just before I return, I'm moving to the next player. So once I check this every time, it happens the same. I will take this from here, move it out, in another method, which basically deletes code from three places and allows me to inline more stuff. There you go. Run the tests. So this is wrapping a call, right? Naming the method might be tricky at this moment because it's, I did this just artificially to clean up some, some garbage, right? Um, mm, you mean this? Is it a bad practice to directly return a method call? Uh, from a debugging, from a breakpointing perspective, it's a bad practice because you can't see basically a variable with the, the return value of the function. But I'm wondering, where should this method be actually placed? <laughs> Did player win? Did player win? Well, it could actually be in the player class, right? So what I will do next is a bit surprising. I will take this expression from here and I will introduce a parameter. This is one of the most advanced refactorings in IntelliJ, refactor, introduce parameter. What this really means is that every time you will call the, this, the did player win, these two places will now get, uh, will now send as a parameter the expression that I've been selecting here. So let's do it. Enter. There you go. Did player win. Both places now pass the current player. Why did I do that? In order to have a method which uh, takes player as a parameter. Why? Because I know that I can move the method now in the player class. Very easy. Public, move. Poc. Did player win? And it returns really if coins equals to... S what do you mean not equals to six? Wait, wait, wait a second. The player wins in case he doesn't have six uh six coins what the heck possible bug and friends because we are closing up uh, finishing the hour i will leave some to do's as it's very good because it calls for the third uh i think it's called for the third uh, episode it's not yet done. We have to discuss more here. Um, that was one of the to-dos that is interesting to discuss. Then, uh, I'm trying to figure out if there is enough content for another full hour. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, we could, we could, we could. Why not? We'll have a third episode. So this is one to-do. Let's see, other, other to-dos. You pointed out very good um, to-do. Uh, nested ifs. We will play with ifs next time. Any other, um, any other suggestions? Logger. Interesting, yes, maybe, but the point is that the output of my entire system consists of the system out uh, uh, result, what, what, what gets printed on the console. This is the output of my system, actually. Good, so nested ifs should be uh, removed. Now, what the heck um, did we to do? To do. Do we get an answer from the business? <laughs> Do we get an answer from the business about penalty box? And by the next time you will get an answer. Uh, then move. Okay, what's this class? This class is quite nice already. Okay, three nested ifs again. Three ifs. Three ifs. Other ideas here. Add 
Bitcoin. How to name this? Name this. In case you want to continue this exercise yourselves by, by the next time, please, please, please do so. Um, as a bit of a retro, what we did, again, moved methods, very good. We introduced parameter. Right when we uh, when we uh, prepared the method, uh, did player win? Right. Wait a second. What happened? Hey. Wait. wait. Ah. How do I get out of this? Uh, Windows XK. Yeah, there you go. We've introduced a method, uh, a parameter, and then we moved again. What we did? We created a class, encapsulated, encapsulated the logic of questions. Um, moved out plus moved out. Other things, correct answer versus wrong answer. Yeah, create parameter for current player. In, yeah, we could, but let's see where exactly. It's all, it's all, it's everywhere. So every method should get this parameter. I'm not entirely sure it will be better to be honest. Okay. Um, it's there all the time. Is there such a guy? Good. Into this parameter encapsulate the logic of questions, process after class, and yeah. Uh, and limit duplicate duplication again by extracted method. Very good. Well, that's kind of it what we did. Plus, we had fun. So, um, yeah, the hardest thing is how not to exaggerate because there were times in which we were close on almost, let's do some indexes. Let's yeah, competitive apps and there are places in which you can you can make it a bit too complex. Why is it? It tells you that you don't need this anymore. Of course you don't need these anymore. I've ha, I've actually given up using this. Uh, instead, I'm using the questions map, single map. Bye bye. Good. So, folks, that was about it. Thank you very much. Yeah, switch case, switch case, switch case. But how? By index somehow. Maybe. Yeah, let's put it here. To do switch case with the question mark. Folks, in case you like that, uh, what we happened, what happened today, this was just a quick live coding. The webinars are a lot more stuff. Clean architecture workshops takes two days. <laughs> um, it's difficult to do them in this format. Uh, but I had have regular discussions about what clean architecture means uh, during my design patterns training. So in case you liked what you saw today, remember I do this all the time, all the day with different companies. And in case you want to join me yourself, free, do so if you want. Uh, tomorrow on my Teachable School, there's a webinar. Good, a full one, three, three and a half hours. Thank you very much for, for being here. Thank you so much. You were close to 300 people. I'm mean, like, whoa. Thanks. Thanks so much. And see you next time, approximately in one month. So I'm planning to do this every month. The next one will be with functional programming. Thanks a lot. And in case there were any kind of questions that I didn't have answered, please uh, email me or somewhat or Twitter me or just ask me. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. And see you next time. Bye.